Before we get started, is everyone present for the Frightfully Forgotten Season 6 production meeting? It's just me. You're supposed to answer present. <sighs> present. Everyone present. And uh, we have someone taking meeting minutes. I can take them. Justin taking minutes. You know, do we have to do this now? It's three o'clock in the morning. I gotta go to work in a few hours. Yes, yes, we have to choose an underrated part six horror movie to kick off season six. How about uh, Freddy's Dead? Ah, uh, that movie should be forgotten. Halloween six? Let's save that for October. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know. How about uh, Leprechaun Back to the Hood? Oh, God, no. Well, Children of the Corn, 666. The Return of Isaac? I can't think of any good part six horror movies. Maybe we're going about this all wrong. It's Dead of Winter, it's January, it's Winnipeg. How about an underrated uh, Snowbound horror movie? Hmm, all right. Well, how about uh, the Shining miniseries? People have been asking us to do it. Shining miniseries, perfect. Man. I can't believe that we're on season six already. Yeah. And to think, at one point we were estranged for 15 years. The best friend of Justin Bush walks out of the past. He teaches his friend how to brew in the basement. But I want to drink. Yes, so did I when I was your age. And I am your age. Boil over, destroy that basement. Best friends each believed the other had perished. Fifteen years later, they were reunited. Adam was drunk. And Justin got sober. I'm not like Adam, okay? I'm not a drunk. I review movies on YouTube. That's who I am. That's what I do. I am Adam. I will now drink you. Hello and welcome to our season six premiere. That's right. Oh. Back from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, eh? <laughs> That's what I feel like after taking a couple of months off and drinking myself to death. <laughs> you gotta wake the old liver up. So today we've decided to kick off season six with the Shining miniseries. There's been some rumblings about on the channel recently. You guys should cover it. So yep. yeah, we should cover it. It's kind of forgotten. A lot of people don't even know this exists. That's they, right. They only know the Kubrick version. Well, here is Stephen King's vision of the movie. This is what he thought the Kubrick version should have been. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Hogarth Castle Bohemian Pilsner. Mmm. So the Shining miniseries was directed by Mick Garris, and he did the Stand miniseries. Fucking great. Yeah, it's fucking great. And I found part one on VHS last week, too. Just part one? Though. I know. Like, why? why? Like, well, where's part two? Or three and four, for Christ's sake. It'll take me a lifetime to fucking find them all. He also did Psycho 4, which we had done the Psycho sequels. Click the link above for that. He wrote The Fly 2. <laughs> which we covered. Which we covered yeah. as well. Which yeah. is a great sequel. Another <laughs> underrated sequel. That's right. The screenplay for this was done by Stephen King, the master himself. This movie stars Stephen Weber as Jack Torrance, and I think all of us 90s kids remember <laughs> him from Wings. <laughs> That's right. I loved Wings. Elliot Gould is in this. Cortland Mead is in this, who plays Danny. A little bastard. A little yeah. fucking kid. <laughs> Rebecca De Mornay is also in this. What else is she in? Uh... And Seinfeld! <laughs> <laughs> and the hand that rocks the cradle yeah. that she's in. The movie starts out with Jack actually getting shown around by the sort of summer caretaker of the Overlook Hotel, right? Commissioner Gordon from the <laughs> Batman movies. Yeah. He gave us a signal! <laughs> And he's in the gauntlet, too. He gets all shot up. By this point, Jack has the job. He's getting shown around. Be weary of this finicky boiler. 
that's in the basement, right? You have to release the steam every night. Yeah. A little bit of the history of the Overlook, right? Jack asks him too, is like, are there any ghosts around here? Is this place haunted? No, 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 no. Right away, he's like, no, oh no, 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 there's nothing. He also bumps into Omen too, who's the manager of the hotel. He doesn't approve of Jack firmly against it, but there's a board of directors and they kind of outvoted him, right? So yeah. he's got to be stuck with it. He thinks Jack is lazy and he's just not meant for the job. Well, he's an alcoholic. And he's an alcoholic, yeah, he's trouble. Jack has a little bit of a problem with drink, right? Uh, uh. <sighs> he ended up hurting his son one day while Danny got into some of his papers and pulled him up and hurt his arm, right? Broke his arm. Yeah. Got fired from his teaching job for beating up this kid, I think rightly so, for fucking this kid was slashing his tires. Yeah, fucking with a switchblade, yes. like, just fucking giving her. Fucking like. little asshole. So Jack ends up bringing his, uh, Wendy and Danny up to the hotel. Dick Halloran runs into Danny. Dick Halloran realizes right away that Danny has this power. Because he kind of has it too, but he's got like a lesser form of it. Danny ends up almost blowing his head off, right? Yeah. He, he all explodes like lights on his on his cadillac. On his nice, <laughs> beautiful car. He's like, oh, that's all right. That's, that's all, all right. I'd be like, you <laughs> fucking asshole! You wrecked my fucking car. You fucking four-year-old guy. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Look at my car. <laughs> Come on, prick! We're not finished yet! Dick Halloran sort of warns Danny, too. He's like, well, there's things in the Overlook Hotel, but they can't hurt you. Close your eyes, count to ten, and they'll go away. Danny, right away, kind of just gets it from his mind, I guess. He's like, what? Like, things in room 217? He's like, well, don't you go in there! So one night, while Danny goes into the bathroom to brush his teeth and get ready for bed, Wendy and Jack, they're like knocking on the door, all right, Doc, come on, come on out. They bust in the door, and he's like having some seizure with all this shit all hanging down his mouth. <laughs> it was a good shot. <laughs> Get the axe! <laughs> There's something influencing Danny's yeah. shine. Jack gets to work re-shingling the entire Overlook <laughs> Hotel! <laughs> like, that's like, a big <laughs> fucking job <laughs> for one person. No real equipment, no. just a hammer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would take a lot of shingles to re-shingle that hotel. Where, where are they coming from? I don't see no pallet of shingles. Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> Give me a hammer nails. Hammer nails. <laughs> so at this point, Jack has gotten really obsessed with the hotel. And not only does he get like really obsessed with the condition of the hotel, that it must be perfect, he also gets obsessed with the history of the hotel. Down in the boiler room, there's all these records and newspaper clippings. newspaper clippings. He starts going through these books. He had originally come there to kind of write a play. Yeah. But now he's decided he's not going to write a play anymore. He's going to write a history about the Overlook. Wendy comes down, she's had, she's been a little forgotten, you know? Yeah, she wants yeah. some attention. And she lays that on thick, yeah. too, you oh, know? it's like, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the tension between Wendy and Jack starts to form, is that scene where it's like, he doesn't even want to be with his wife anymore. He just wants to be with the Overlook. Yeah. Danny, who's always kind of playing, he's restricted to certain areas, not supposed to go in any rooms, but he yeah. keeps being drawn to room 217. Stupidly decides to get the master key, and he gets in, this woman is in the bathtub. That's right. All decrepit and rotten and everything. <laughs> she takes him to town, you know, you shouldn't <laughs> be in here. And Danny comes down, he's all beat up and bruised up, and there's no one else in the hotel. Jack has a history of abusing Danny, so of course Wendy accuses Jack of all this. In the meantime, Jack has been going crazy and doesn't want his family to leave the Overlook and smashes not only the CB radio, but also all the guts of the- That snowmobile. The snowmobile. And blames it on Danny. Yeah. Must have been Danny. Must have been, who else would do it? I wouldn't do it. Why would I? You know, I'm the caretaker here. I wouldn't wreck it. So at this point, Jack is spiraling deeper into obsession with the Overlook. And Wendy is the opposite. She wants nothing to do with the Overlook. She wants to get the family out of there as soon as possible. Really wants to drink really bad. All he can think about is drinking at this point. Why wouldn't you? Your family's turning on you, or so you think. I don't blame him. Goes to the bar, and suddenly, 
It's loaded. <laughs> Not only yeah. is it loaded, there's a bartender <laughs> there waiting to pour you drinks. And there's a party going on too, right? That masquerade party. The bartender convinces him, well, you can't let your family leave. You have to take care of them. He grabs a croquet mallet mm -hmm. and goes to take care of his family. In the meantime, Danny's used The Shining to kind of try to call Dick Halloran back for help. He is struggling to somehow get on a plane and get through this snowstorm to get to the Overlook. That's where we're gonna end the plot. I'm sure if you've seen the Kubrick's version, you might know how it ends, but actually, it is a different ending. So if you haven't seen the miniseries, and you've only seen the Kubrick version, well, finish watching the miniseries, because it is quite different. Yeah. And it's the real story that Stephen King intended to tell. At the time when this movie was done in 1997, the movie was pretty well received, right? People seem to really like it and accept it. Yeah. But as time went on, people started to dislike it, right? I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that, well, it was made for TV, so they're pigeonholed a lot of times with what they can show. Yeah, and the language, the violence, yeah, yeah. all has to be toned down. The casting on top of it, you can't get better than the Kubrick cast. Doesn't matter who you cast, you are going to be a lesser version. Yeah. So it, it is hurt from the get-go. You're, oh, you're always in the shadow yeah. of the Kubrick version. But why should you watch the miniseries? And this is the big thing. And I think everyone who loves the Kubrick version should watch this version because it does explain way much more. Everybody, the backstory of every character of the hotel, of what The Shining is, of who Tony is. You really understand Jack a bit more as like a struggling alcoholic. Like you're a bit more sympathetic with him. You don't really sympathize with Jack Nicholson's Jack Torrance. He kind of seems like an asshole from the get-go. <laughs> right. In this one, you kind of like understand his struggle. Like he seems like he's at heart a good man who's got these demons backstory with like a lot of the ghosts of the hotel you understand why the woman's in the tub in room 217 the movie is more relatable when it comes yeah. to the characters right you can feel and you can sympathize with them because it's like you know a lot of people have been in the exact same situation right yeah. not looking after a hotel but you have same... a job to do yeah exactly and you have to do it and you can't be thrown off track by it, right? And it's yeah. important. The dynamic between the family, you get that a bit more with the whole flashbacks. The cinematography for this movie is is amazing, actually, because it's actually done up in the mountains. They actually used the hotel that was the inspiration for The Shining, the book. Get a lot of panoramic views. For a made-for-TV movie, it's pretty cinematic. The effects and the makeup, like the, the lady in the bathroom, she looks really good. Yeah. It looks pretty scary. The hedges. The hedges. Hedges. The topiary. Oh man, <laughs> like that is bad 90s CGI, which I could really, they just could have like cut that whole thing out. It would have been fine. Jack looks good and he's all possessed with that mallet. The showdown between Jack and Wendy is actually really good. Wendy actually takes a huge beating in this. You feel it. He hits her in the gut with that mallet. It's like, oh. <laughs> well, and then she's on her back, kind of, and he hits her again in the knees and everything. Yeah. Like, oh, well, Like, fuck. yeah, they beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> like, it's it's a fight for life and death. He has yeah. to kill his son to appease the ghosts in the hotel. But he can't quite do it. That's what the whole movie is about. And they do a great job of it, right? You, yeah. you really feel what he's feeling. You don't want to kill your own kid. Yeah. That part's actually pretty good where he's like, Ugh. he's all like, Ugh. Yeah. he's like getting all kind of sick about the thought of like killing his kid. I mean, it's pretty a gut-wrenching scene. That's where the movie really does a lot more justice to the character of Jack Torrance is that whole struggle. Stephen King's major dislike about the Kubrick version is like, no, like that's not the character yeah. I wrote. That's not the point of the yeah, movie. The point of the movie is you do overcome the yeah. addiction and your demons torment and your demons. Yeah. So that's why you should watch this miniseries if you've never seen it, is it does really tell Stephen King's story All right. better than Kubrick's version. But what's a better horror movie? 
<laughs> the Kubrick version is the most iconic, one of the most iconic horror movies ever, right? Yeah. So how can you ever beat that? You can't. It blows its load far too early. They lay everything out right away. And you know how the movie is going to come full circle. As soon as they mention the boiler. You just spelled out the whole ending of the goddamn movie. Yeah. <laughs> I know how it's going to end. In the first five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Steven Weber is okay as Jack Torrance. Like, he does the job okay, but you... You cannot watch it and not think of Jack Nicholson. Yeah. They offered this role to many, many other people who all turned it down for that reason. We don't have film actors in this movie. We have TV actors for the most yep. part, right? Yep. So that that hurts it. The kid Ugh. is the worst, I think, of the whole movie. How Just, did this kid get cast? Like I have no who idea. Who was the who's what casting director was this mom blowing to <laughs> for this kid to get this fucking role and any other role? Destroys the entire legacy of the whole thing. This kid wrecks the fucking movie. Come on out! It's good packing snow! <laughs> no wonder Jack wants to kill the kid. I sympathize with Stephen King because he hated Kubrick's version because it didn't match the book and it didn't match his, his vision. His, vision right? yeah. his books are great as books, but they don't translate that well into film. Yeah. Which is why directors need to change certain things. If you haven't seen the Shining miniseries and you haven't read the book and you want to know exactly what really happens in Stephen King's story, there it is. This is the best way to do it instead yeah. of reading the whole book. And until next time, keep drinking. This is my kind of haunted hotel. <laughs> like, you just want a bottle of Jack to appear? It appears. Yeah. It's just there. Like, <laughs> oh, right. fuck. Like, <laughs> sign me up for this caretaker <laughs> job. Just booze wherever you want. It's for free. Yeah, it's like, kill your family? Eh, small price to pay. Yeah. Yeah.